you ever think the horn in your real life car was pretty cool and you wanted to add the same thing to RC car? But well, we did too, so let's add a buzzer. So the two main components in this project are an Elektrop 4 amp RC switch, which takes signal from our receiver and passes it onto our buzzer to make some noise, as well as these five volt active buzzers. And make sure they're active and not passive because we want it to work. So how does this Elektrop RC switch actually work? Well, it takes in a PWM signal, then does some magic in the middle, and then sometimes output five volts. Now, what is that sometimes based on? In order to test this, we can use the PWM to JST connector that comes with the switch in order to better use our multimeter to see when this actually turns on and off. So then I'm gonna use my servo tester, plug in our switch and plug in our battery. So right now I'm at the bottom most PWM value and everything is off and we can take our multimeter and touch the pads here we can see that we've got no voltage coming out. Pretty standard. But as we increase this to the very top, we can see that we both have a light on right here, and now we are outputting five volts. So that's how it works. As the signal gets high enough, it outputs five volts. Now, what is this exact value that it turns on and off? So we can use this little light here to see when it actually turns on and off. So right now it's at the max, and as I decrease this value, it turns off right around 1400. You can see right around 1400 the lights off and then it doesn't turn back on until it passes 1600. So there's a little bit of a gap there where if it's if you're right in the middle if you're right at 1500 it'll stay at whatever it's doing but if you drop below 14 it turns off go above 16 it turns on. And just like that that's how it works. So that begs the question how are we actually going to use this switch to connect it to our buzzer? Well, thankfully, these buzzers are an active buzzer, which means that in order to go off, all it needs is five volts. I think you can see what I'm getting at. I'm going to take this JST connector, solder it onto this female connector, and solder these pads to this buzzer. And now that that's all connected, let's see how it sounds. Nice. Now this is pretty cool, but the wiring is really big and this isn't going to fit in my car very well. So how can we do a little bit better? We're going to start by undoing everything we just did because I wanted to get at the pads that's on the Elechoc RC switch because I think I could do a little bit better and route these wires a little bit cleaner. So after cutting off this heat shrink, which was a little annoying because they did a good job at sealing everything down, I just desoldered all of these pins because instead of going outside of this main body, I think I could route them back inside, which will not only save us space, but it also protect the wires quite a bit on the inside. It's also important to remember where these wires connect to the board, so either take a picture or use the board indicators that tell you where the signal, power, and ground wires go, and make sure not to flip them before powering on. Then I took to designing and 3D printing a little case that fits around our switch and also houses our buzzer. And a little side note, I've got no formal education in CAD work or design or 3D printing or any of this. I just Googled and YouTubed and tried to figure everything out step by step because it's really easy once you get the hang of it. So if you're thinking I'll never be able to design things like this or print things or anything, just remember that the internet exists and it's really easy because there's a lot of tutorials out there and people who have been in your situations too. So if you want to do it, you can figure it out. I also tried to use the Bamboo Lab slicer to kind of make these little plugs in order to fit the top and bottom together because I want it secured, but also easy to take apart in case things went wrong. After sending everything over to my P1S and printing it out in TPU, things were looking fine until I actually tried to get it to work. These TPU snaps that I printed were just way too small and the tolerances weren't tight enough, so they just didn't fit together. And on top of all of that, this wasn't big enough for the switch itself, and the wires weren't going to fit out through this little gap I made, so I had to go right back to the drawing board and start again. This time I went for a much simpler base and cap design where the bottom part housed the switch and the top part slid over the top, causing friction to hold everything together, and there was still a hole at the top for the buzzer to stick out of. Thankfully, this only needed two iterations because I made the top part not big enough, and then we were good to go. The wiring itself was pretty straightforward and I just bent the pins on the buzzer at 90 degrees so I could fit it right on top of our board. 
Then I took some pretty thin wire and stripped it and prepped it and then soldered two sides onto the buzzer and two sides onto the power and ground, just like before. And instead of outputting to the JST, I output it directly to the buzzer. I made sure to add a little extra slack because I could bend this buzzer into the exact right position and I didn't need to be perfect on these wire lengths. Then I went back to the standard servo connector that came with this board, re-tinned, re-prepped, and made sure the pans were really nice, and then I just soldered the wires directly back to where they were. In hindsight, did I need to take them off? No, but I didn't know that, so it was just fine. Plus, I made my connections a lot better than they were. And after a few iterations on the 3D print, this fit really, really nicely, and I fit the buzzer into that top cap, and then press fit everything into place, and all the wires are nice and protected. But here's the big question. Does it still work? All right, so I just added a little bit more heat shrink at the end. It still can slide off if you want to take things off, but for the most part, I think this is pretty much good to go. And I love how small it is, how compact. This is made out of TPU, so it's a little spongier, a little more movable just because I wanted to not have to deal with the super tight tolerances that you have to deal with with PLA. And I figured it's going to be in a car, so it's going to rattle around. So a little extra vibration dampening wouldn't hurt anyone. So let's give it one last test here. I'll make sure this is down to start. But if we plug this in here, plug our beeper in and great that plus it's a lot smaller it's a lot nicer and the cables are a lot cleaner because we have everything all compact and fit in here but we have to fit this into our car all right so i got my wrestler here and i have got this nice little space right back here which is not only tucked away and away from any debris that's coming in but it's also right next to my receiver so i don't have to have a super long wire i can even use the length that it came with. So I'm going to take off this little waterproofing seal so I can fish our servo wire in. Then I'll take off this top cap to fish the wire in, plug it in, then stick it down here. All right, so we got this door open. We got still three channels to work with here. So I think I'm just going to put this at channel three because why not? So I'm going to fish this servo end through here. so that it's going through this, there's a little mesh that gets screwed in. So all of these are more watertight, uh, but that's why I'm using that. And then I'm going to wire this into slot number three. And that looks good. So now I'm going to re-pull this all through, making sure all the wires are tucked inside and not just pinched. Yep, that looks good. So now we can screw this back on. There we go. And before I screw this top part in, I'm just gonna make sure that it fits nicely back here. And I can even tuck a little more wire in because all it has to go is right back here. It should fit nice and snug. I was gonna double-sided tape it in, but it might not even need it. I think it's just kind of right on the money. Nice. So yeah, that's going to sit there. I could always throw a little piece of double-sided tape, but I'm going to try to fish all of these wires through this gap as much as I can because there is extra space in there with the, uh, uh, what's it called? With the smaller ER5C. So I'm going to just kind of fish these wires in and make sure there's a little bit of slack where needed, but for the most part, it can be pretty darn tight. And then just to put this custom antenna mount back on there, I can just slip. That would go like this. So we slide this on here through the bottom and then just on top like this and screw this back in there now we've got our server wire coming out to go into our buzzer everything's back in in place and we can set up our transmitter All right, we're back on our transmitter. So I'm gonna go into model, then we're gonna page over till we get to our inputs. And this is on channel three, and I think I wanna set this button right here as the horn button. So I'm gonna click on it, go down to source, then click my button, which now it says SD button, which looks great. And then if we pan over to the mixes, we can go on to mix number three, make sure that's setting at the input three. And I think that's gonna be it, because if we page over to the outputs, go down to channel three, we can see that right now it is currently at 988, which as we have just figured out that when it's that low, the buzzer will not be on. So once I click it and hold it, we're stuck at 2000, which means if I click the button or hold it, the buzzer should go on. 
So let's go back, plug in our car and see if that actually works. All right, we're connected and now when I click the button, nice, we have a nice little beeper. Awesome, that's looking good. And that's actually all we got for you. Hopefully this tutorial is nice and easy and straightforward, but if it wasn't, make sure to let me know in the comments or join our Discord to ask a few more questions. If you have more projects or more things you want us to add to this Rustler or our plans, make sure to let us know in those forms of communication as well, because we always love hearing what you guys got. And thank you so much for watching, and thank you especially to our members, because you guys are the reason we're able to do these fun projects, and we really appreciate it. So if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and make sure to stick around for more videos like this.